you know, people are constantly surprised. Um, it's a little less apparent on this particular paper. Uh, you can put green down next to purple, and you'd think, well, that's not going to work. Uh, and let them run together, and they do really cool. You know, the water, um, I, I, you know, watercolor is part science, part physics, you know, part, part art. Uh, so you have to kind of understand, oh, well, if I put this next to that and the two run together, one's going to shoot up this way and the other's going to shoot this way, and you're going to end up um, with something that you didn't plan on. Um, so it's a lot of experimentation, even when you're, I mean, I, I'm pretty used to it, but every now and then something will happen and I'll go, oh, I didn't expect that, but that's pretty cool. You know, I remember the first time I put Payne's Gray next to, um, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Burnt Sienna, uh, which one's kind of a brown and one's a, a kind of a blue-gray. Uh, I put the two next to each other and they made this amazing color that I could never have mixed in a million years. Uh, I thought, holy cow, man, that's, that's amazing. What, you know, how... Pff, uh, how, and, and it looked like rusted metal, and I didn't even work hard for it. That's the other cool thing, I, you know, and maybe a secret uh, about watercolor. You know, people think it's hard, and it can be, because, you know, you have to learn how to control or, or, or at least kind of predict slightly what's going to happen. Um, but it, it can also do a lot of the wor work for you. If you're painting with oils or acrylics, you have to put every color down and you have to mix every color and you have to um, uh, work really hard. Um, whereas when you're doing watercolor, sometimes you can put a color next to another color and let them do the mix, you know, the water does the mixing for you and you, and you take all the credit.